Building today's vehicles involves thousands of parts in a maze of interacting electrical, mechanical, and computer systems. As an auto body technician, you must be familiar with all the various parts and how they interrelate in order to properly diagnose and repair damaged vehicles. To communicate effectively with coworkers, parts suppliers, and insurance adjusters, you must also be familiar with the terminology used in the industry. In this program, we'll introduce you to some of that key terminology, as well as some basic information you'll need to know about vehicle construction. First, we'll take a look at the three most common types of frames that are in use today. You'll find out about the different sections of a vehicle and the major parts and assemblies included in each. In the process, we'll talk a little bit about how vehicle construction impacts our work as auto body repair technicians. The frame of a vehicle is its foundation. Kind of like the foundation of a house, all other parts and assemblies are attached directly or indirectly to the frame. There are three basic frame styles used in the construction of today's small trucks and automobiles. Body over frame, or BOF, unibody, and space frame. Each has its advantages and challenges for repair. Let's take a closer look at the characteristics of each frame type. First is body over frame. The body over frame provides a strong structural steel platform to which the body parts and assemblies are attached. This frame style is most commonly found in full-size luxury vehicles, full-size pickup trucks, some smaller pickups, many SUVs, and full-size vans. Body over frame vehicles tend to be heavier than other frame types and ride higher off the ground, but are extremely strong. The frame itself is made of thick steel, about an eighth of an inch thick, formed in U or box shaped sections. This makes the frame extremely strong and able to absorb a lot of the energy in a collision. Because most body parts are bolted rather than welded or bonded to the BOF, sheet metal and frame damage are often easier to repair than in other frame styles. The frame itself consists of two side rails that are slightly closer together in the front than in the rear. Closer rail spacing in front allows the wheels to make sharper turns. Torque boxes allow the frame to absorb twisting motion as the vehicle encounters bumps in the road. The frame horns are the front ends of the side rails where the bumper attaches. Various cross members connect and hold the two side rails together and support the other vehicle components such as the engine and suspension system. Body brackets provide places to attach body components. The conventional or BOF frame provides support for other body parts and sections, but it's separate from them. In other words, the other components are bolted to the frame rather than structurally welded or bonded to it. There are different types of BOF frames. Ladder frames were common on American cars before World War II. Today you may find them on delivery trucks, but they're no longer used in the construction of cars. X-frames, another type of conventional or BOF frame, are typically found on older convertibles and large American cars. This is a perimeter frame, the most common BOF frame in use today. The side rails extend the full length of the vehicle and surround the passenger compartment. Front and rear cross members support the engine, suspension, and drivetrain. The floor pan is bolted to the center section, adding more stability and resistance to twisting loads. Because of all of these factors, a perimeter frame has good side impact strength. Perimeter frames are most commonly found on pickup trucks, some SUVs, and vans. The unibody is probably the most common type of vehicle construction in use today. In unibody design, both body panels and frame rails work together to provide structural strength to the vehicle. The best way to understand unibody construction is to think of an eggshell. An eggshell is thin but has tremendous strength. Force exerted on one part of the shell is spread out or diffused to other parts to resist breakage. By welding, bolting, and adhesive bonding the various body parts together, a strong structural shell is created for the unibody vehicle. There's no separate heavy gauge steel frame under the body because none is needed. Strength is achieved through the shape and design of the components rather than by mass and weight. The advantage of unibody construction is that vehicles are strong, yet lighter in weight than their body over frame counterparts. This provides a cost savings in manufacturing and better gas mileage. There's a challenge in repairing unibody vehicles. Because both the roof and quarter panels are often welded or bonded in place for structural strength, removing and replacing a damaged roof or quarter panel can be a more time-consuming repair than in a BOF vehicle. A third type of frame is called the space frame. The Saturn automobile is probably the most common example of a vehicle with a space frame. 
The space frame consists of a high-strength steel cage that is covered with plastic or composite panels. These panels typically clip on or are adhesive bonded to the frame. The panels on a space frame can be removed without affecting the structural strength of the vehicle. This is not true for a unibody vehicle where the panels are an integral part of the vehicle structure. One thing to remember when working on space frame vehicles, they're more likely to have hidden damage. Plastic or composite body panels don't deform on impact the way metal does. So after a collision, damage to the interior frame structure may be more substantial than indicated from the outside. Also, because plastic doesn't rust, the panels may mask the extent of interior corrosion. So for a space frame vehicle, it's important to get behind the panels to examine the interior frame. Some vehicles actually have structures that are combinations of various frame types. A Taurus, for example, has a partial frame. A partial frame is a cross between a conventional frame and a unibody. Now you're familiar with the basic frame types you'll encounter in auto body repair. As you gain more experience working with different makes and models of cars, you'll discover other variations on these basic frame types. Each has its unique challenges for repair or replacement. Let's take a look at the other parts of a vehicle. Vehicles are divided into three body sections. The front section, the center or midsection, and the rear or tail section. Auto body professionals often refer to jobs by section when discussing collision repairs. Vehicles are also divided into right side and left side as seen from behind the steering wheel. On American vehicles, the steering wheel is located on the left side and the passenger side is on the right. It's important to remember which side of the vehicle is left and which is right because parts are called out that way. Now let's take a look at the various panels and assemblies found in each of the three sections. Panels are stamped steel or molded plastic sheets. Assemblies are combinations of panels and smaller parts. The front section, or front end assembly, includes everything from the bumper to the cowl, the part of the body just in front of the windshield. The bumper assembly usually consists of a plastic bumper cover and an inner steel or aluminum bumper and grill. Some vehicles have a plastic honeycomb or foam structure that's designed to compress and absorb the energy of a front end collision. The bumper assembly bolts to the front frame horns in a conventional frame or to the frame rails that extend out near the bottom of the front section of a unibody vehicle. The inner fender skirts or front fender aprons surround the front wheels and keep road debris out of the engine compartment. They're often attached to the front rails and cowl assembly. The shock or strut tower, which is part of the front fender apron, holds the upper parts of a strut suspension system in place. The two most common front suspension systems used on American vehicles today are the McPherson strut and the unequal control arm type, also called conventional or short long arm suspension. By far, the most popular is the McPherson strut. The strut assembly consists of a coil spring, upper suspension locator, and shock absorber. In this example, the strut is mounted vertically between the lower control arm and the body. In the control arm type suspension, the upper and lower control arms are of different lengths. Control arms are designed this way to reduce tire scuffing. Ball joints attach the outer ends of the control arms to the spindle. This type of front suspension most often uses coil springs and shock absorbers to dampen vibrations. One advantage of the independent control arm type suspension is that it sits lower in the car, allowing for a lower hood profile. The front fenders extend from the front bumper to the front doors and cover the front suspension and the inner fender aprons. They usually bolt into position. The radiator core support is the structural framework that holds the radiator and related cooling system parts in place. It's usually fastened to the inner fender aprons and the frame rails. The hood is a hinged panel that covers the engine compartment. The latch mechanism and hinges are part of the hood assembly. Hinges are attached to the cowl and the hood. The battery tray, as its name suggests, holds the vehicle's battery. The cowl, located directly in front of the windshield, includes the top cowl panel and the side cowl panels that extend down on either side of the body. The front bulkhead, or firewall, divides the vehicle's front section from its midsection, or passenger compartment. The front bulkhead is usually welded into place. The car's center, or midsection, includes everything from the dash to the rear bulkhead. The main structural element in the center, or midsection, of the vehicle is the floor pan. The floor pan is usually composed of one piece of stamped steel. Pillars are the vertical supports for the roof and must be relatively strong to protect passengers during a rollover or from an impact on the roof of the vehicle. There are three pairs in a four-door vehicle. 
The front or A pillars extend up either side of the windshield. The center or B pillars support the roof between the front and back doors and provide a place to mount the hinges for the rear doors. Rear or C pillars extend from the rear quarter panel along the rear window glass and support the back of the roof. On a unibody vehicle, the C pillars are often an extension of the quarter panel. The rocker panels or door sills are high strength beams at the bottom of the door openings. They're normally welded to the floor pan, pillars, and quarter panels. The rear bulkhead separates the passenger compartment from the trunk and rear section of the vehicle. The roof is a large panel that's welded to the pillars for strength. The dash assembly or instrument panel holds the padded dash, instrument assembly, and the AC, heat, and sound system controls. Doors are complex assemblies. They consist of an outer skin that has been cut away in this example, an inner stamped metal frame that includes an intrusion beam, door handles and locks, door latches and striker plates, window glass, and a window regulator that raises or lowers the glass with a push of a button or the turn of a crank. The side intrusion beam, an important structural element, protects passengers from side impacts. With space frame vehicles, door skins are easily removed, giving you access to interior parts. On unibody and conventional frame vehicles, working on parts inside the door can be a time-consuming process. The rear section includes everything from the rear bulkhead to the rear bumper. The quarter panels are the large side panels that extend from the rear doors to the rear bumper and often include the rear pillars. Because the quarter panel is an important structural element in a unibody vehicle, it is usually welded or bonded in place. This can make replacement of a quarter panel a very time-consuming job. A trunk lid or hatch is a hinged panel that covers the rear storage area. Lids and hatches include hinges, a lock, latch, and striker plate. The rear section includes the trunk floor pan. The floor pan is often welded to the rear rails, inner wheel houses, and lower rear panel. The lower rear panel extends from one quarter panel to the other beneath the rear bumper. Well, now you know some of the basics of automobile construction and terminology. You've learned about the three most common frame types found on today's cars and light trucks. Body over frame, unibody, and space frame. You've learned about how vehicle construction can impact our work in auto body repair. You've learned about the three sections of a vehicle and the major body panels, parts, and assemblies included in each. Finally, you've learned some of the industry terminology used when referring to specific parts and repairs. Knowing how cars are constructed will help you find the most effective way to approach repairs. Knowing the right terminology will help you communicate effectively to get the right parts to get the job done right.